talking about these rogue pastors, a Bible verse that comes to mind is Matthew 7, verse 15. Beware the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Welcome to a special quarantine edition of the In the Name of the Father podcast. This is your co-host, Father Anthony Costanza. And now let's go live via remote to our self-quarantined host, Father Stephen Mahoney. Oh, Father Anthony, it is so great to hear your voice right now. Hallelujah. It's good to hear your voice as well here. And it sounds really great, even though the two of us aren't in the same location. Uh, Thanks to technology, it sounds like we're in the same room to me right now. And it feels that way, too. And how have you been? You know, I've been doing good. I've been staying busy. I've been actually working out a little bit. And, you know, this quarantine has kept me safe from from some of uh, the temptations uh, out there. And so it's it's been, overall, it's been good. Yes, I know these last couple months have been extremely trying for everybody out there as we're dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic, which is sweeping across the world and turning lives upside down. And as priests, we're here to protect our flocks and to lead by example. And so that's why we've decided to maintain proper social distancing right now. You know, Father Costanza, this one scared Catholic woman wrote me and said the priest at her local church was encouraging her, her family, and her friends to come back in, make sure to show up on Sunday, and he was going to keep the doors open. And um, she wrote me concerned, and that concerned me too. And I asked her to identify him and and privately, and I, I'd love to have him on the podcast and see what his thoughts are, because I don't want to talk behind someone's back there. You know, he's one of our own, and so, hey, come on the show. And uh, wherever two or more are gathered, God's there. Well, what happens when three or more are gathered? we got a rockin' good podcast. The Holy Trinity is all you need. (laughs) Yeah, amen. This woman also said that her priest was trying to imply that COVID-19 was a hoax. You know, I've been having to give last rites to a lot of people, and I can guarantee you this is not a hoax. And what's worse, stories like these lead me to believe that people are taking Fox News as the gospel and treating Trump as if he was God and following the man as if he were Jesus the second coming. And I cannot get down with that. And since he's been president, this guy's been caught in thousands of lies. And let's not forget the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that means you should not take Donald Trump's word over the Lord's. Yes, there have been some rogue priests all over the country that we're seeing here in the United States right now who are openly endangering their flocks by trying to encourage them to gather for Sunday Mass and come in contact with dozens, sometimes hundreds of other parishioners who might be infected with this COVID virus. And Father Stephen, what are your thoughts on that? My first thought is money. Why are they doing it? Why would anybody do that? You know, because we could pray at home. We can go on television and and give our message with no audience. So I've got to believe it's that money coming in. You know, they get they're 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 people too. They're addicted to that money, and I I don't know if Jesus would sit right with that. Yes, I know that one of the only times Jesus lost his temper in the Bible is when he saw firsthand the greed that was going on in front of a church and that really set him off and that's what made Jesus violent his only instance in the Bible of that happening you know talking about these rogue pastors a Bible verse that comes to mind is Matthew 7 verse 15 beware the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravenous wolves and they come in times of chaos like we're having right now so these wolves are not they're not dumb, Father. They're not dumb. They know when to strike. When the sheep are scared and, and wandering about and there's a storm on the horizon, that's when they, they strike. And so I'm just going to say right now, this is a perfect time for a lot of these snakes and wolves out there because people are scared and they're not thinking right. That is true. As we were preparing for today's broadcast, you showed me earlier some very hateful comments you received from some so-called Christians out there, and they verbally attacked you basically because you questioned the leadership of Donald Trump. That's all I did was question it. I, I didn't attack. I, I just started a conversation, and boy, you know, they were all doing this in, in the name of, of God and Christianity and, and Donald Trump, and boy, I see a lot of hate from that side, and the Jesus that I know didn't speak that way, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say it still stung a little bit. I, I was taken aback, you know, when I read these comments. I did not think that Christians would be attacking me this way, but they did. Yes, and it's been very unfortunate to see. Well, you know what? Not to get political, but I'm getting political. If Jesus were to come back, I don't think he'd be watching Fox News. I think he'd be watching PBS, to be honest. 
I think Jesus might take issue with Fox News, but we'll save that for another podcast down the line. And we don't want to get too political here since we know it is a very divisive topic these days. And before we shift off of politics, Joe Biden is a Catholic and it's it's going to be hard for him to beat Donald Trump. It's like David versus Goliath. But I think with a pebble in his in his sling, anything's possible. So let's move on to our next topic. And we have one letter here from a listener named Debbie who is in New Haven, Connecticut. And she wanted to point out a bit of scripture that she came across lately, which she thinks could be in regards to Donald Trump in the book of Revelation. And that is from Revelation 13, verse 5. There was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemies, and authority to act for 42 months was given to him. She asked if this could be in reference to Donald Trump. What are your thoughts on that, Father Stephen? You know, that's interesting. When she was reading that passage, I instantly thought Donald Trump and then 42 months. And I'm doing the math and 42 months would bring us to sometime up in the summer. And uh, that's, that's what I'll say about that. And we're not here to judge people on their political affiliations. We're just here to reflect upon what we've been experiencing as Catholic priests. Amen. All right, enough of that monkey business, but now it's time to have a little fun. And since we know so many of you have been cooped up these last couple months, we wanted to bring you a special edition of What's Good in Hollywood to give you some ideas of some entertainment you might be able to stream in your homes during this time of quarantine. The film we wanted to feature in this edition of What's Good in Hollywood is a film that's available on Netflix for streaming, which we know a lot of listeners out there have access to. But the name of this film is The Two Popes. And this film follows Pope Benedict XVI, played by Anthony Hopkins, as he attempts to convince the future Pope Francis, played by Jonathan Price, to reconsider his decision to resign as an archbishop, as he confides his own intentions to hand over the papacy. Now, this film contains a couple of wonderful performances from these two lead actors who we've seen in a bunch of films in the past. And Father Stephen, I know you had some thoughts on the film as well. Oh, you know I'm a Pope Francis fanboy. I adored this film. So let's take a listen to a clip. This is Pope Francis, played by Jonathan Price, speaking to Pope Benedict, played by Anthony Hopkins. Let's have a listen. Why do the presidents of America and and Russia and China come to you? Because, unlike them, your authority comes from the fact that you will suffer and die in the job. A martyr to justice and truth. For this, all people come. Forgive me, but... But? Christ did not come down from the cross. Ah, God always grants you the right words. Oh, no, no. A pope must go on forever. Be the personification of the crucified Christ. If you do this, you will damage the papacy forever. Well... What damage will I do if I remain? Wow, those two actors, they just owned those roles. That was amazing to just listen to that right there. Yeah. Jonathan Price as Pope Francis. Let's just say I'm crushing on him a little bit right now. Can you say Silver Fox? Yes, Father Stephen. I know that you're, like you were saying, a self-proclaimed fanboy for Pope Francis. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Uh Uh-oh, well, I'm happy to hear your confession any time after this podcast, Father Stephen. I think you just did. All right, everyone. Well, that's all we have time for. But it's been great being able to deliver this podcast to you once again. And Father Stephen, if you'd like to take us out with a closing prayer until next time. Dear Lord, thank you so much for creating the great technology that we're still using to spread your word and to connect with others. And thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for open minds and open hearts. And let us pray for all the Trump supporters and the Fox News viewers out there that they may have a change of heart and allow them to let kindness and truth into their hearts. And thank you for giving me and you, Father, the courage to speak the truth at all costs, even if that means ruffling feathers. And I just pray that the great scientists and doctors that you've put on this planet, please bless them with a cure for COVID-19. Can I get an amen? Amen, Father Stephen. And until next time, thank you for tuning in to this special quarantine edition of the In the Name of the Father podcast. And until next time, stay tuned, stay strong, and and stay stay blessed out there. And keep washing those hands.